Carlos Ramirez, owner of NVS Audio in Roselle, New Jersey. Today, I want to talk about the Cicada CH65.2. This is a brand new company to hit the motorcycle audio market. These speakers are specifically designed for motorcycles. They're weatherproof, super high power handling, large horn loaded compression driver. It's everything you could possibly ask for in a motorcycle speaker. It's super loud, it sounds good doing it, it has a ton of power. Uh, it's Neo Magnet. The owner of the company is actually one of my teachers, one of my mentors. It's Larry Frederick. Larry, I became a dealer for Hertz Audison Electromedia over a decade ago, and Larry was my trainer when I first became a dealer. So he came out to the tri-state area and hosted some classes and taught me how little I knew about high-end audio. Uh, Larry's a super great guy. Um, very strange to deal with. Uh, Larry carries around bullshit cards with him. And if you answer or try to answer a question with bullshit, he will hand you a bullshit card. And he will call you on it every single time. Larry's a numbers guy like me, so it's not opinion, it's scientific fact, and everything he does is by the numbers. He understands motorcycle audio, he knows what it takes to get loud without having stuff blow up, he understands the physical limitations of speakers, amplifiers, and motorcycle environment, and he is willing to explain this to you if you call or email him. So when I opened up the package, the very first thing that caught my attention was the quick start guide. It's not an owner's manual. He purposely makes you go to the website. The owner's manual is 14 pages, but there's some things he wants to make very clear. So he puts them in the quick start guide in every box. So as I'm reading this, I can hear in Larry's voice because this is exactly the way Larry talks. Larry is super smart, but he likes to have fun and laugh and joke and crack jokes, so we get along very, very well. It says, at Cicada Audio, we manufacture the best in motorcycle audio, period. It says, thank you. We hope you enjoy your audio products from us. We strive to be the best, and your satisfaction is our first priority. Actually, it's our only priority. If you have any problems with our product, please contact us either by phone or email. Also, on our webpage are many interesting text sheets on multiple common issues. These would be a good go over and get a better understanding of audio. Our mantra is no fairies, no pixie dust, or unicorns. It's all physics. We don't make it up. We just follow the laws of physics. In the rare, in the rare circumstance that you are not completely satisfied, please contact us. We want to help. Our customer service team will do their best to make it right. We appreciate your business and strive to make you happy. CicadaAudio.com, and it's got the phone numbers and email address. Then on the other side, it's got the diagrams for hooking it up. They try to make it as simple as possible. So it comes with the 12 dB crossover, which I like, spade connector, some screw down terminal connectors, which I love because you cannot get a more secure connection than screwing down the terminal unless you solder it, but this is awesome. Uh, the instructions, he calls it plug and play. The only one thing that I noticed that might be an issue, it's got spade connectors, but there should be labels telling you which spade to plug it into because on Harley Davidson, it's backwards. The smaller one is positive and the large one is negative on Harley. On Larry's, they're both the same size. And I know why I did it that way. That way, if you have an issue, you can invert the phase. But I would just love to see in the owner's manual telling you which wire to hook it up to. It is plug and play. I tried it. It plugs into the factory harness inside the pod. But I would have loved to have a little cheat sheet. I know that pink is positive and pink black is negative. But... It'd be really nice for it to be in the manual. But uh, 
very nice instructions uh, shows you how to put it together uh, make sure you pilot polarity mm. tech tip running tech tip power and blowing up speakers speakers do not blow themselves up somebody has to overdrive them usually this overdriven issue is low being low on power and the amplifier being driven into clipping this clipping causes speaker voice coil to get hot causing the glues to become unglued the glue unglues and the voice coil gets unglued from the voice coil former another contributing factor is running the driver well below its resonant frequency always 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 high pass coax horns like these don't run them in full because the speaker cannot play down to 30 40 hertz so you will blow the speaker up um, he recommends for full power handling 100 hertz high pass 12 db per octave that is in the manual um, one thing i'm curious about is if the phase of the tweeter is automatically inverted in the crossover i played them and they sound correct so i'm assuming that he's got the phase inverted so once you hook up positive and negative on the tweeter it will no automatically invert the phase in the crossover to keep the tweeter and the woofer in phase i have to reach out to larry and ask him about that so we'll get to the crossover in a second huh. So the manual, it's one manual for the six and a halves, the six mines, and the eights. They're available in four ohm and two ohm. It is the only high power coax with a horn on the market that I know of that is available in two ohms. This is huge. The reason this is huge is, and that's what makes this speaker different from every other speaker I've tested and why I wanted to get a set in my hands as quickly as possible is you do not have to bridge the amplifier to get maximum power for example we're using the sound digital evo x 2400.4 forum in order for this amplifier to do full power you can bridge it into two forum speakers and it will do 1200 by 1200 in order to get max power out of each individual channel if you're using four ohm speakers, you need two speakers on each channel. With these speakers, you only need four speakers to get maximum power out of the amplifier. So if you use four of the two ohm version of the 6.5, the amplifier will do 600 watts per, ch per channel, equaling 2400 watts RMS. So he's got a beautifully well-written manual. But on page five of the manual, I found a mistake. So it's saying that you can add an optional resistor if you want to attenuate or lower the volume of the tweeter. So there it is right there. There's nothing wrong with that. The problem is the resistor's in the wrong spot. They're showing the resistor here and the crossover here. You can't do that. If you do that, the amplifier will see the lower impedance and the tweeter will play lower. The issue is you've now changed the crossover point because the capacitor in the high pass filter is dependent on the impedance load. So that capacitor wants to see the 8 ohm tweeter to give you the 4K high pass that it's designed for. I know it's a typo because on the very next page, it's showing the resistor in the proper location before the crossover. So it's speaker, crossover, resistor. This is the right way. This is the wrong way. So here you see speaker, resistor, crossover. This one's wrong. I have to bring that to Larry's attention tomorrow. Uh, let's see. So with the high power handling of these speakers, Larry's most powerful amp is 150 by four. So in order for one of those amplifiers to be able to run these speakers even close to their full potential, you'd have to bridge it. So that means if you wanna run these speakers to the max, 
using his amplifier, then you will have to get the four channel, the 150 by four. You would have to get two of them and bridge it, one for the front fairing and one for the speaker lids or lowers, wherever you're putting the other set of speakers. The tweeter's rebuildable if you blow it up. It shows you in the manual. You can buy a diaphragm and replace it just by removing the four screws. He's got the frequency response graphs listed on page 12. So, manual solid. Now, Larry used to work for Electromedia, which is Hertz Audison. Then he went to work for Diamond Audio, and uh, it's no secret that he worked for Diamond Audio, so he'll help produce Diamond Audio and Sherwin Vega speakers. So, it's no surprise that his speaker looks just like the MP654. Very, very, very similar in design. Very similar in construction. But he made everything a little bit bigger. So in order for a speaker to handle power, the part of the speaker that handles the power from the amplifier, the, the wattage, is the voice coil. So the Diamond Audio has a 1.5 inch voice coil. This one has a two inch voice coil. The tweeter is, we have a one inch tweeter on the Diamond. We have a 1.4 inch on the Cicadia. Now, being that the speaker handles more power or higher wattage, does it make it a better speaker or a better sounding speaker? It just means the speaker can take more heat. There's a lot of numbers that come into play, not just wattage. There's sensitivity. There's, it doesn't matter if the speaker can handle a thousand watts if it wastes 900 of it along the way. So how much of that power is actually turned into acoustical energy? That's where sensitivity comes in. These speakers did really well. They played really loud with big power, but they sounded really good at low volumes too, which is very important. And it's hard to do with a lot of speakers. There's a lot of high power speakers that do not sound good on low power. This sounds good on both. Um, something I noticed during my test, and I knew I was gonna run into this problem because all these coax horn speakers suffer from this problem, is lack of mid bass. So they play really, really, really loud, but they do not play really low. And that's just, it's, it's just the way these speakers are designed. But uh, I think his mid-bass driver is gonna be different. We're gonna be testing those next week. But right now we're specifically talking about the coax horns. So obviously Larry used to work for Diamond. So he wanted to make a speaker, and this is just me assuming, uh, Larry has not confirmed this, so I'm assuming he built the speaker to be a direct competitor with the Diamond MP series. So he, impl he improved all the specifications by a little bit. Larger voice coil, more power handling, more RMS power. Um, and he improved the crossover. So this is the crossover that comes in the Diamond MP series. Larry's crossover is very similar, but instead of uh, heat shrink, plastic, he's actually got a hard plastic case with vet grooves in it to allow it to dissipate heat. And it honestly looks 10 times better than a circuit board just wrapped in heat shrink. Tells you the crossover point right on the crossover. This is a 4K 12 dB. I like that. And it actually shows you the value of the components on the board. 0.34 millihenry on the coil for the woofer and 4.7 microfarad for the tweeter. Um, same value on the capacitor on the diamond, but I don't know what the value of the coil is because it's not labeled, the cap is labeled. I'm just curious why they're using a 250 volt capacitor on the diamond and he's only using a hundred volt on the cicadia but larry's much smarter than me so i'm sure there's a reason he did it um maybe diamond just overbuilt theirs but uh 
Very similar crossovers, both 12 dB per octave. Speaker design is very similar. Uh, there's push terminals for the speakers here, screw terminals for the speakers here, but both have spade terminals for the horn tweeter. The even even if these were the same power handling, what gives this speaker an edge, the Cicada speaker an edge, is the fact that it's available in two ohms. That gives you a lot of installation flexibility. So if you want to run a four channel amp and get the absolute maximum power out of the amplifier without bridging it, two ohm speaker is the way to do it. Um, I like this because there's a lot of speakers on the market that are similar. Just the fact that these are available in two ohms are gonna make me become a dealer for these speakers because I could see situations where I need to squeeze a little more power out of the amplifier without adding more drivers. So the impedance thing is very tricky. Like anybody that uses Bema knows most of the Bema speakers are eight ohms. So you have to use a really, really large amplifier to get the most out of the speaker because the speaker impedance being so high, if you're not using multiple drivers, let's say you're only using two Bema eight ohm drivers in the fairing. In order to get a decent amount of power to each one, you'd have to use a 1200.4 or 2400.4 because the amplifier is automatically going to do one third or one quarter, quarter power with an 8 ohm load on a channel that's going to do full power in either 2 ohms or 4 ohms bridged. So this gives you a lot of install flexibility. Um, they're also priced very close to the diamond. The diamond is 449, the Cicadia is 499 or 479. So they're within $50 of each other. Uh, being that this is available in two ohms and four ohms, it's, it's, it's gonna give the diamond a run for its money. The diamond audio speaker sells itself, clients come in and just ask for it. Diamond builds a quality product. They have brand recognition, people just trust them. So it sells itself. It's going to be interesting to see how Larry's speaker line does. So we ran big power to it. We thing was taking a ton of voltage AC. Um, I hit it really hard until the voice call started to smell. Uh, then I let it cool down. Then I hit it again uh, on the speaker. The speaker handled a ton of power and it sounded good doing it. Um, I test all my speakers in real world environments. So this speaker is designed for a motorcycle. It could be used in cars. We use motorcycle speakers in cars all the time, depending on how loud the customer wants it. But it's specifically designed for motorcycles. So of course we tested it in a motorcycle speaker pod. We have a streak line, a 14 and up bat wing fairing speaker pod that's already been modified because this is not a drop in fit. You have to grind the ribs in the back of the no visible modification everything's done on the inside of the pod you don't have to heat it or cut it like the road glide for the street glide you just grind on the back for the road glide you have to do the standard modification that you would have to do for the diamonds or just about any six and a half on the market like the db drive so you see how base of the speaker sticks out just as far so whatever modification you got to do for this got to do for this one and before you guys ask please do not ask me to compare the dv drive moto 6 cd to this speaker or this speaker because this speaker is almost double the money so please don't compare a 350 dollar speaker pair to a 500 dollar speaker pair yes this one outperforms in almost every way but it's not fair because it's almost double the money. So this is a really, really good speaker for the money. It's really hard to beat, but if you're spending more money, you can get way more performance. So enough rambling, let you hear it and run you through the test. All right, we're running the 2400.4. We're only having one channel hooked up. It's a two ohm driver. We have our lithium battery. And we're, our target voltage is 27 volts, which will net us 685 watts RMS.
so we're getting just under 700 watts RMS into that driver. First test was at 1000 hertz, uh, same voltage, 400 hertz. Okay, so now you've heard the speaker, you've seen what it could do. Um, you've seen me run a ton of voltage through it. Um, now it's up to you to decide if this is the right speaker for your build or not. Uh, it's made a believer out of me. I am definitely becoming a dealer. I will have these speakers in stock. They fit a special niche. So $500 price point. So they're less expensive than Euphoria and the Bama. Um, more expensive than the Diamond and the DB Drive and the Ground Zero. But they're available in two ohms. The Cicada amplifiers aren't available yet, but they'll be available soon. Um, so if you use their 4-channel, you'll be able to get... Uh, if you bridge the 4-channel, you'll be able to get 300 by 300. But if you want to absolutely max these speakers, uh, which some shops choose to do, we like running a lot lower power here. But uh, if you want to absolutely max these speakers, uh, Sound Digital Evo X, 1200.4 4 ohm, running in stereo, running the 2 ohm version of these speakers, will give you 300 watts RMS per channel. Uh, the 2400.4 Evo X 4 ohms will give you 600 watts per channel if you're running the 2 ohm version of these speakers. So, if you have end... I think the new Euphoria Expert amplifiers, it could take advantage of those because they do more power. As a matter of fact, let me grab one and read the specs. I think it'll be a good, good combination with the Euphoria 4 channel. Yeah, I was right. For you guys, uh, we have the Euphoria Expert line of amplifiers. So I was right. Um, for you guys that like to run extreme amount of power, the EX 8.4 will give you... 800 by 4 into 2 ohms and the EX 9.2 will give you 750 by 2 into 2 ohms so you big power guys I want to test the limitation of these speakers that those are two part numbers that would run a ton of AC voltage through these speakers uh, for those of you guys who want to push these speakers to the absolute limit um, another thing you have to be careful with is that's why I hate talking about wattage. Anybody that knows me knows I do not like to mention wattage because wattage is very misleading. It's a term that that number by itself means absolutely nothing. So wattage just means how much heat a voice coat can take. Wattage has nothing to do with tuning. Wattage has very little to do with my speaker choice because as you can see in the test, we're running double and triple RMS power to a lot of these speakers. So wattage is just how much heat a voice coil can take before it falls apart so there's some tricky marketing like uh 
For example, these speakers are listed as uh, 500 watts RMS, 1000 watts max, which is true, but that's per pair. So that's 250 watts per driver, which is still an ungodly amount of power. And we just tested the speaker at 700 watts, so it's doing more than double its RMS rated power. So it does the 500 watts that it claims, it does it dynamically. And RMS all day long, the speaker can hold 250 watts, which most four channel amplifiers can't produce anyway, period. Uh, Sound Digital Evo X 800.4 at four ohms does 135 watts. At two ohms, it does just over 200 watts. So it's not even exceeding the low end RMS power number. So please don't get wrapped up in wattage numbers. Wattage is really irrelevant. If what determines how much wattage a speaker can handle is the voice coil size. A typical six and a half has a one inch voice coil. All the badass six and a halves on the market have a one and a half, or in this case, a two inch voice coil. The bigger the voice coil, the more heat the speaker can take. It really has nothing to do with how much music the speaker can play or how it sounds doing it. It just means that it can take a bunch of AC voltage. Uh, but that's it. Have a good night. See you next time.